So, how do coils work in pinball? So coils got like relatively high currents. Um, so you need like thick wire, so 16 to 18 AWGs or one millimeter square. And they're typically driven with PWM, so um, they are either only pulsed, so they're enabled for just like 20 to 30 milliseconds for a really, really short time. Um, or they are driven with PWM, so on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And that's really, really fast. So to, uh, yeah, to minimize the current and because like current multiplied by voltage is power and uh, we do not want to burn them. So that's why we keep like pulsing them to have like less power in the coil and still keep the magnetic field active. Um, they are driven by field effect transistors. That's like a transistor in, in cool. <laughs> uh, they just got like a little bit less or very, very low resistance. So they burn less heat, which is very practical. And um, they are typically soldered um, because otherwise, uh, yeah, they are high currents and connectors. They also got a resistance. So yeah, they are soldered. And if you use connectors, for example, at your board, you got those large Molex connectors, um, which can typically drive up to 7 amps um, heat wise. Um, I got a coil here. So this is like a typical post coil. So this one can go up. Nothing special. It comes from, I think, from Pinball Life. That's that's a typical coil. So it's all right here. Those lungs here. And uh, the, the direction doesn't really matter in most cases. Um, there is often a diode on those. And the diode is here for a reason. And the reason for that is that if you activate a coil, that's done because there's a magnetic field here. And then on one of the sides, that's disconnected. So we disconnect one of the lungs. And that uh, has the effect that the magnetic field collapses. So the, the current, the, the voltage is gone, but the magnetic field is here. And now you got like an effect, like a dynamo on your, on your bike, bicycle, for example where you create voltage and that's inverted. And the, the best thing is if you have your diet here, this will flow through the diet and will basically turn into heat. Otherwise, it will go back via this wire and, and then actually might damage your, your field effect transistors, which is why most driver boards still have protective uh, resistors on them, but it's not great. Uh, because uh, it's still not great because those wires are like a large antenna in this case and this will create like interferences with other devices with your lights with your logic and also with your neighbor's radio so that's why at least in production machines you should add, add um, diets here i know that a lot of people do not do this initially in homebrews because um, the, the danger is if you invert the diet it's very likely that you fry your your field effect transistor because then you got like virtually zero resistance here and the field effect transistor will just burn and then it's instant death and you have to replace it that's and it's a valid reason to do, not do it for that reason but if you finish your machine in my opinion you should add dyes everywhere if you do a production machine do it just just do it so this is the coil, it's exactly this one. So here we got like two lungs and there you, you solder your, your wires. And uh, in general, like this is how the circuit looks. It's relatively simple. You got like the, the power supply, 48 volts here. You got your coil and you got a field effect transistor which connects your coil to ground. So what you do is um, you share high voltage in this case. So you got high voltage from your power supply and you connect it to one of the sides. And often you then go with a second wire from this coil to the next coil and to the next coil and to the next coil. Um, and then there's an individual wire from here to your power, uh, to your driver board. And that driver board, like you see here, will then connect your coil to ground when the coil should be active. One thing to wiring here is like, try to keep your voltage and your ground 
as parallel as possible. That will just minimize interference. Also, they should be roughly the same length. So it shouldn't be like your high voltage goes like this and the, the wire to your driver board goes here. That's, that's not a good thing. Run them in parallel. And um, yeah, also like if you run, you, you often see this, that high voltage goes in here, goes out and do the next one. And then, then um, unlike those wire harnesses, you got all the, the return wires in parallel. So that's, that's a good idea. Um, I would recommend to do it this way. Um, and that's already like how you should do this, right? And the coil, the, the, the diode would go here, so in parallel to, um, to this driver, and basically invert it. So it goes in this direction. So by default, it does nothing, only if again, the field collapses because this FET here opens the, the path to ground, then uh, the voltage goes basically back here. So that's where you put the, the diode. And that's already how you put coils, uh, how you wire up coils. So that's really, really simple. Use thick enough wires um, because those coils got like really low resistance. So like a flipper coil is like less than two ohms often. And those are like, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 ohms, depending on the type of coils. But still, if you enable this one permanently, this will also burn at some point. So not, not super fast, but it will still burn. Um, yeah, so that's coils. <laughs>